We've got the champion update with the Skeleton King, the Golden Knight, and the classic Archer Queen from Clash of Clans. They all have hero abilities too. A cloaking cape for one elixir, 11 second cooldown, invisibility 3.5 seconds, 200% damage, 900 DPS, whereas normally her DPS is a lot lower. She just wrecks the pack out with invisibility. And look at that speed. And then it, it, it turned around. Oh, you've got the golden knight. His ability is to dash six tiles for 400 damage. Maximum of 10 dashes. These are his stats at tournament standard. So it's like having 10 bandits. <laughs> that's, that's so illegal. Oh, man. Eight second cooldown, and it costs one extra elixir to activate. And then the Skeleton King costs four elixir to drop, two elixir to activate the ability with a 20 second cooldown for a maximum of 20 skeletons. That's like a graveyard. And he gets skeletons from units that die, and it charges up his skeleton meter. Is that what, what you would call it? Casting it right at the bridge, too. Tanks everything, kind of like a graveyard. Oh, man. I think he's going to go well in bait. He's a tanky boy. Golden Knight and bridge spam. And then for the Archer Queen, it's kind of like 2.6. But instead of 2.6 minor, it's with Archer Queen. So what I've learned is that the Archer Queen, it doesn't replace the Musketeer. The Golden Knight, it doesn't necessarily replace the Bandit. The Skeleton King does not replace Graveyard. But I think it might synergize with bait really well. Just because the units are going to give me life force. Although, I don't know if I want Inferno Tower there. Maybe I just want Skarmy to feed my own ability. Before we get to that i want to thank today's sponsor anchor i bet you're watching this on your phone right now is your phone plugged in right now is your battery low for real i'm really obsessed about battery management on my phones and everything i'm not joking you i have a charger in every room in my living room in my bedroom by my computer there's a lot of charging that needs to be done and for my iphone they're all the 20 watt chargers that's the fast charge that can bring it up to 50 percent in about 25 minutes the anchor 511 charger just released you have four different colors you can pick from they sent me the arctic white and the glacier blue what just literally blows me away about the anchor nano pro this 20 watt charger is the same size as the five watt charger that you used to get in boxes i was honestly really blown away when they wanted to sponsor my videos like oh my i i mean i'm gonna get paid to talk about a product that i personally use every single day it's smaller than the original brick it charges as fast it's quality they have different colors it can fast charge your phone or if you're a pro gamer like me the ipad pro <laughs> It's really sweet. The iPad charger is 20 watts. This is 20 watts. It's so useful. Not only is it small, you ever have those times where it just, it just doesn't fit in the plug because it's too thick? Like, why does it take up three plugs? These ones don't. It's a perfect size. And this is literally everything that I've been looking for. I'm going to be taking this when I travel all the time. Huge shout out to Anchor for sponsoring this video. The Anchor Nano Pro 1010. Check it out in the link in the description down below. Let's get back into it. Hello there, Code OJ. What if I just defend with a skeleton king? What happens when the skeletons on the left? <gasps> oh, the skeletons. They charge them. I'm graveyarding. I'm great. Oh, Archer Queen. I'm scared. I'm scared. Do I, do I rocket that? She looks so strong. Six for five. I think that was worth it. But now I'm low on elixir. Tournament standard 11. In friendly battles, at least. We'll talk more about that later on. Oh, I'm going to put down this giant skeleton just so I can absorb his ability early on with those skeletons. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that Archer Queen. She's just going to wreck everyone and everything in existence, even with her ability. Oh, the ability. I don't know where it is. We have Graveyard. I should have enough stuff. It's a lot of skeletons on there. Archer Queen is so strong. I'm going to put down the giant skeleton in the back just so I can feed on the life force of my skeletons. I don't know if that's even the right play. But we're just here to check out the new mechanics. Maybe I'll have them tanking. Oh, look at that. I can't use the ability, but I mistapped my skeleton army because I thought I was going to activate his ability. That is so heavy illegal. Oh, she's invisible now. I don't like this. She just, she just wrecks so many things. I don't know if I want to activate the ability. You lose the two elixir if he doesn't activate it in time. Let's go for a big wham bam push right now. We're going to sacrifice our spirits. Going to charge up his ability. Is he good in bait? I don't know. Oh, 
Oh, that is, that is, that is rock. Wait, does my rocket hit? It hits the invisibility, but I missed the tower. Oh no, Knight has good value for its cost. I don't like that. Arch Queen is obnoxious. She's obnoxious. I'm putting stuff down. That's way too strong. Take up. Yes, yes, yes. Charge the ability. Okay, I wasted two elixir to use the ability. Wow, that was not worth it. Right now, I can't do anything on this queen. I actually... Okay, her ability's down. Her ability's down. Her ability's down. We're good. Oh, that Archer Queen. She is so strong. 1,000 health. She dies to lightning. Is lightning going to be meta? My goodness. Her ability is only one elixir. That's busted. So it's 2.8 cycle. I think I can just keep her alive by tanking stuff. Oh, she would be pretty decent with Battle Healer. Can we protect her? Yep, yep, we're good. I'm going to activate her ability, which takes a second to activate, by the way. And while she's invisible, the Ice Golem is on the tower. <laughs> she's obnoxious. What's nice about this 2.8 cycle is that we have Miner and Ice Golem to tank, and we have the Skeletons to cycle back to the Archer Queen. Miner cycle has been meta in a while. Okay, we're going to activate her invisibility because... Uh, he does the dashy dash stuff. I don't like that at all. Not one bit. Did he just make her cry? <laughs> he did. Oh, and we can activate her ability again? No way. She's so strong. That's obnoxious. This, they already nerfed her, by the way. This is the Archer Queen nerf. And then look at that. I have the Archer Queen back in rotation. Can you stop an overpowered, unbalanced Archer Queen? <laughs> I, I see that. Let's just activate the invisibility. Oh, 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 my. What the? Our knight? Hello? That was really weird. He, he dashed away from the Archer Queen, which is kind of a win, to be honest. She just wrecks stuff. Oh, and you can't cycle back to her. I'm just gonna fireball there and that's it. Wow, the Archer Queen is obnoxious. And I love it. Just oh, the first round, you were wrecking me so hard and I had to prioritize everything to counter her. So then that's why I wanted to play the second one with her. I was actually really scared your Golden Knight was gonna dash onto my Archer Queen. And then he did, but then he dashed onto the cannon, onto the tower, and then she was fine. And if he just stayed on my Queen, it would have been fine. Bridge spam with Bandit. Except it's not Bandit because he dashes away. All right, well, I'm just gonna do a Golden Knight thing. Oh, okay, we got, uh, I'm gonna have to zap that. That's illegal. Took out the Musketeer and the Ice Spirit. Uh, do, do I dash? What? <laughs> what? He counters Swarm! I hard count. Oh my goodness, what a hard counter. And I've got his ability activated. He's got the one dash on there. Oh man. So the Golden Knight counters the Skeleton King and the Archer Queen counters the Golden Knight. Oh my goodness. That dash on the Skeletons? <laughs> he activates the ability. He dies. But the ability still goes on. Okay, that's actually really good to know. What happens if I use the ability at point blank? Okay. Then it dashes onto him. Hmm. Interesting. So you can't surround him because he'll just do the dashy dashes. And then I think he just locks onto the tower after. Oh, what? You know what? At this point, I've got enough elixir to put down the Golden Knight. Hello, Golden Knight. Hello? We've got to activate his ability like right now. Right now. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh man. This ability is so funny. It didn't dash in the ice golem on the tower. I'm spamming, I'm spamming it. So unlike the bandit, you can't stop him with swarm troops. That's obnoxious. All three heroes have tower skins. Starting off, we're going to have the Skeleton King's Tower. Interesting that the original king is sitting on top of the Skeleton King's Tower. One cool thing they've done now is that you can actually check the star levels. Star level one, Inferno. Star level two, his helmet visor is more shiny. Star level three, he's got horns. So now you can actually start collecting star points by upgrading and donating cards. You can upgrade star level one starting at level seven then at star level two you can start upgrading them at level 10 the piggies stayed the same for the mother witch though 
and start level three. You can start upgrading at level 13. Fancy. We can actually use star levels now. That witch looks really weird. Friendly battles will now be at level 11. Tournaments will be at level 11 and grand challenges. And even if you're not maxed out, you can build the deck in the grand challenges with the heroes. I guess they're called champions. The champions have a very similar drop rate to legendaries, except it takes a little bit less to level them up. Level 11, they unlock with one card. To get them to level 12, it's two. Level 13 is eight cards. And level 14 is 20 cards. Fortune chests have a chance of unlocking a legendary at the king level 14. There's a guarantee champion from a legendary king chest. But wait, there's a wild champion chest that's now in rotation. And... Wow, that's a sick animation. King's Journey. That's cool. It tells you you get clans here. Level up chest. Clan donations happen at three. You get pass rail at five. Plus you get magic items here. Level five, that's more card decks. That's good. Level seven, clan wars and star points. Then level eight, you get the good, good. Level 11 is gold crates. And then at level 14, you're guaranteed a chest with a champion. With the power of the dev build, we're at level 11 now. And we also magically have all the magic items. So the legendary wild cards don't work on them because it's not a champion wild card. That's not bad. I would use these to get them to level 14. Golden Knight takes two cards to get them to level 12 for 35,000 gold. Look at that. Dash goes up and then 75,000 gold to get them to level 13. I like this animation. Oh, you get more skeleton level. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. This is where you want to use Book of Books. From level 13 to 14. That's 20 champion cards. Magic items are blessed. And just like that, I maxed them out with the power of the dev build. I have so many books on my main account. I am going to max them out so fast. And I won't, and I won't have, have to drop $20,000. $20, so you can touch the top left to see your experience or how many star points you have. Look at that. We're level 12 from upgrading our cards, of course, to gain experience. Collect your level up chest. All right. My level 12 chest. Let's get it. I wonder what the probability is for these chests. Fancy. Level 13. Get another level up chest. Got a wild card. A legendary one, too. Okay. And level 14 champions are on. By the way, this is the dev build. You can only unlock champions at level 14. So what I had earlier wasn't accurate. Collect all the level up chests to unlock your first champion. We got this. And that's been any faster. I don't care about legendaries. We got we got the we got the champion one up next. Ah! We'll pretend we just unlocked him. Oh, so you don't get two cards. So that's the card in the chest. All right, all right, all right. I thought you got two cards from there. So for this season, at tier 10, you get the triple crown arrows. And for November, you get the skeleton king tower. In December, we're going to get the archer queen tower. Then in January, the golden knight tower. There's a few emotes we don't have access to, but the archer queen, the skeleton king, and the golden knight are going to have special emotes available in champion challenges. They're replacing 96 silver chests adding 12 more golden chests in its place, six more gold crates to the cycle for a total of 30 now, six more plentiful crates and two overflowing crates. I didn't even know there was a difference. And then there's going to be four wild chests in rotation now at the max level, of course, if you're arena 12 and above. Guaranteed a champion. We are using my magic item for this. What's in here? Ah, oh, yeah, I already got it from the level up. Guaranteed legendary few epics. That's nice. And a guaranteed champion. Oh, beautiful. Wait a minute. In a 500 chest cycle, you only get one legendary chest, but you have four wild chests. Am I reading that right? Yes, you're guaranteed four champions per one legendary chest. Okay. Oh, but legendary cards are going to appear more frequently in most chests now. And champions appear similar to how legendary cards used to drop in chests for players level 14. I've been maxed out for a few years now. I farmed 250,000 cards in grand challenges, and I haven't really had purpose to really, really play this game in a while. Even if you're not max, you, you still have access to the champions in the challenges, even in classic challenges or the tournaments as well. That's it for this. Thank you for watching. If you want to show more videos out there, you can hit the bell button there too.